Hi everyone, welcome back to the Raised Bed Garden Series. Today I'm going to share with you how to refresh and replenish the soil in your raised beds for the next time you plant. Now I'm getting ready to pull out my cool weather vegetables here and pretty soon I'm going to be planting some tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers. However, the organic matter in the soil does settle over time in the raised beds and the plants just take a lot of nutrients out of the soil. So it's really important that I replenish those nutrients so the soil is happy means my plants are happy, which means I'm gonna be able to harvest a lot of vegetables. Well, the first thing I need to do is pull out the veggies here that have been growing over the winter time. I've got some broccoli that's gone to flower and some cabbage. We've gotta make room for the new out with the old. A lot of people ask me, do you need to leave the roots in or can you pull them out? And it really is your choice. I like to just keep it easy and just clip the plants right at the base, leave the roots in. And I will go ahead and compost these plants here. If your plants are disease or pest infested, you might want to just throw them in the green bin. So let's get this garden bed all cleaned out and then we will be ready to refresh the soil. So this raised bed is a two by four Smart Pots urban raised bed. Remember how we talked about it's really important that your raised beds have drainage in the last video? This fabric is aerated so the water allows the water to drain through and it grows really nice vegetables. So now that I pulled the plants out that I want to come out, what I'm going to do now is kind of push the mulch aside to leave room for my new soil and pull out my drip irrigation so it doesn't get in the way when I'm adding my new soil. When you're growing in raised beds or doing any kind of gardening, soil is definitely your biggest investment. And there's no need to dump out the soil in your raised beds or in your containers every time you plant. You just need to top it off. So the first thing I'm gonna to add to my raised bed is some compost. Now this is compost that I made here in my own backyard. If you don't have access to your own compost, you can usually get bag compost at the garden center, or you can get it in bulk from a landscape company. So I'm going to add two to three inches on top of my garden bed here. So I'm just going to spread my compost over my garden bed here and kind of work it into the top few inches of the soil. Compost is a really quick and easy solution to keep your garden soil fertile from season to season. It's full of microbes and good nutrients which are easily absorbed by the roots of the plants. It helps loosen your soil and it has good moisture retention so your plants have the moisture they need to thrive. Now that I've got my compost added, the second amendment I like to add to my soil to refresh and replenish it are worm castings. I'm using the Vermisteria worm castings. They're an organic and natural soil amendment. They have tons and tons of benefits for your soil. They improve the soil structure and they also add a lot of beneficial bacteria and microbes, which help your plants be happy and healthy and really helps them be resistant to pests and disease. So I'm just sprinkling several handfuls over the top of my soil here. You really don't have to be exact with amounts, just kind of eyeball it. I'm probably adding maybe a fourth of a bag or so to this two by four Smart Pots raised bed. And then I'm gonna work it into the soil, just like I did with the compost. I've got my compost and my worm castings all worked in. And wow, look at this soil. It's looking so much better already. Well, the third thing I'm gonna add to my garden bed here is some balanced granular fertilizer with a low NPK. Now, in case you're not familiar with NPK, let's just break it down and make it really simple. When you go to the garden center, you're gonna see three numbers on your fertilizer bag. This one happens to be a 533. So the five refers to the nitrogen or the N, and that's what helps encourage nice green leafy growth in your plants. The three is, refers to the phosphorus or the P, which helps encourage strong roots, flower, and fruit production. And the third number, which in this case is a three, is the K or the potassium, which helps your plants be healthy and helps them really resist pests and diseases. So you really wanna use a fertilizer where these numbers are fairly low. 533 is great, 555, 777, somewhere around that range. Because once these numbers get high, like say a 20, 10, 15, your plants will have almost too much of a strong burst of growth then the pests go, hey, that's a nice juicy green vegetable. Let's go in and chow that down. And our goal here is really slow and steady growth, keeping your plants healthy, happy, and grow yourself a lot of vegetables, not to attract the pests. So I'm just gonna spread a couple of handfuls here over my garden bed. And again, you don't have to be exact with your measurements. So you can just spread it over your garden beds here and work it in. 
or you can also add it to the planting hole as you plant your veggies. And this is also a slow release fertilizer, so it will feed your plants over the next couple of months. And I also have all these directions written down for you in my brand new book, The First Time Gardener Raised Bed Gardening. So make sure you grab a signed copy of that too. Now what I'm gonna do is just water all these nutrients into the soil. You really wanna keep the soil nice and moist so the plants have the moisture they need to get off to a really good start and to let the nutrients kind of sink down into the rest of the garden bed. And here I'm using my hose link retractable hose with a sprayer. I love this sprayer so you can easily adjust the amount of water that you want to put on your garden bed. And it has a lot of really nice settings as well. And then I'm just going to work the water into the soil here so that all the soil is nice and moist, not waterlogged. That way the plants, they have all the moisture they need right there in the soil so the roots can easily absorb it. I'm just gonna even things out a bit and then reinstall my drip irrigation. The garden bed is looking better already. It's definitely ready to plant some tomatoes and cucumbers. You can refresh your soil at the time of planting or a few weeks before you plant really doesn't make that much of a difference. Just experiment and see which way you like the best. I want to invite you, subscribe and join me in the Raised Bed Garden series this spring. We've got a ton of fun videos to come. In a few weeks, I'm going to be showing you some DIY raised bed plans. So even if you have no construction experience, you're going to be able to build and set up your own raised beds. We'll be doing soil recipes. I'll be showing you trellising plans, planting plans. We got a ton of content yet to come. And copies of my new book, signed copies, The First Time Gardener Raised Bed Gardening, are now available over at calicamgardeninghome.com. Grab this, it's all gonna be written down for you in there. I've got a new seed collection to go with it. My raised bed kitchen garden seed collection, 15 varieties that are especially designed for growing in raised beds. Now you can get them in a seed book bundle and save yourself $5. And you can also use the code Calikim Spring Fever and save an additional 20% off site-wide all my seed collections, smart pots and books until Monday, March 28th. Let me know down below if you're in with Raised Bed Gardening this spring with me. Just comment, I'm in. And I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.